Okay, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, it's the final day of GDC. I hope you all had a great week. And uh, before I start, uh, uh, I want to remind you to turn off your cell phones and would very appreciate it if you can fill out the uh, questionnaire uh, after the talk. So uh, if you don't know how to pronounce my name, you can just call me Johnson, it's close enough. I am not a native English speaker, so my English may be wrong sometimes, but still I hope I can get most of the points across. Uh, I'm actually a programmer, but in recent years I run an uh, indie dev meetup called IGD Share in Taiwan. I also uh, run IGD a Taiwan chapter and co-organize Taipei Game Developers Forum since 2012. But more importantly, regarding this talk, I was on the translation team for the official uh, traditional Chinese subtitle for Indie Game the Movie. Uh, but Netflix uh, recently messed up our work. I will talk about this later. So uh, I also worked on some of the indie game localizations such as Nova 111 and Tengami. I helped Global Game Jam as the Asia regional organizer and the traditional Chinese translation volunteer. Uh, and I also roughly do the same translation volunteer thing for uh, Indicate Festival. So let's just start with this uh, very famous uh, image. I think you've all seen this before. Uh, all your base are belong to us. Uh, suffice to say, I'm trying to help stopping the opposite case of this. Uh, because from my personal experience in the past, at times I wish I could have helped you know, people fix their, traditional, uh, their Chinese localization issues. Uh, gaming is a global community now, and uh, not just the players in the US will see crappy or funny localizations like this. A lot of games now are being localized into fast-growing, uh, non-English speaking markets, especially in Asia where China and Taiwan uh, play a bigger factor. So let's uh, check out some of the questionable Chinese localizations here that we have been exposed to in the past. So this example is the traditional Chinese version of Neverwinter Nights. Uh, just by looking at a screenshot here, even if you don't know Chinese, uh, you can still tell there's something wrong. The dialogue options are obviously duplicated, and um, there are strange numbers between the sentences. But the most iconic thing in this particular screenshot is that the last part of the dialogue reads like this in English originally. So it's, I tried to, gra to grab her hand, her being an old woman, but she gave me a kick in the teeth. So this kick in the teeth, as far as I know, is an idiom uh, meaning that treating you badly when you are in need. But the traditional Chinese version mistranslates that into literally a woman that kicks your teeth. So there are hundreds of uh, things like this in the traditional Chinese version of Neverwinter Nights, and this being the most funny and notable one. As a result, uh, teeth kicking old woman sort of became the nickname uh, for Neverwinter Nights in Taiwan. <laughs> so you definitely don't want your localization to end up like that. I'm going to show you some uh, more background information and the context of this talk, and then uh, lots of examples grouped by categories, you know, general idea, and also like simplify various traditional things, uh, naming and encoding, UI, phones, and lastly, a little bit political stuff. And uh, then finally, some tips and conclusions that you can take away. So let's look at this uh, from a practical point of view first. China's market share is huge and growing fast, and Taiwan, although small in land mass, but still the number six on this chart. And if you look at the chart carefully, you, can, you also notice that China has only one color in the bar, simply because the chart maker couldn't track down numbers from Android-related markets in China. And this is the year-over-year uh, -year growth. Both China and Taiwan is in the top five, although again, uh, at a Google Place part, uh, they couldn't track down the number for China. And in addition to that, uh, Taiwan is also an important soft-launching region for a lot of developers, uh, if the game type is suitable. It's similar to Australia or New Zealand for the US market, so if you want to eventually go to Japan or China, chances are that you might want to soft-launch in Taiwan and see your result and performances here. So these are probably the more convincing and practical reasons why you want to treat the Chinese localization more seriously. Now, after we've established some reasons you might want to do this, let's start to talk about different aspects of Chinese localization. I would assume you probably already know this uh, simplified uh, VS traditional stuff, but uh, 
in Chinese, things are, things are definitely vastly more different than you would think. So this table shows the national language service description in Windows for the various lang uh, Chinese uh, systems. As you can see, it's very confusing to say the least. Not to mention the spoken language differences such as Mandarin and Cantonese, and you know, I used to have to deal with all the UI and phones and encoding and some other stuff. So there's a very valid question you can ask, uh, you, maybe, you, can, you can ask yourself is, is this just too much trouble? From my point of view, it's perfectly understandable if you choose only one Chinese language to localize, if at all. Also, I ask myself the very same question, uh, why is it worth talking about this and spending time preparing all the materials? Because uh, it's hard for me to see that some of my favorite games, especially some of the indie games, sort of struggle in this regard. Also, I often feel like Chinese-speaking regions are not that uh, well understood by people when I travel abroad. And it goes without saying that I was greatly inspired by the Arabic crash course that Rami gave us uh, in GDC 15. Now let's just uh, dive into some of the actual examples in games. And for the first example, I want to pull up uh, The Witness. So actually for The Witness, I am going to talk about three different uh, issues of three different issues of different complexities in it. The first example here actually is very, very uh, straightforward. You see five menu buttons in the traditional Chinese version on a screenshot here. The first button in English uh, is load a game. And then uh, the traditional Chinese look like this one. So if we take that uh, button text in the traditional Chinese version and translate it back into English for you to understand, it then becomes download a game. So if you uh, play the, the, the witness in traditional Chinese, this really sticks out like a sore thumb. The game was seven years in the making and very deliberate and dedicated in all kinds of ways. Yet the translation people make this kind of mistakes and the original developer have no way to double check that. It just feels like the movie Titanic's Night Sky, if you get the Neil deGrasse Tyson and Jim Cameron joke. Does anyone know that joke? Okay. Yeah, the star is wrong in the sky, yeah. So another example I want to uh, highlight in the, the, in the game is this one. Uh, it's rather complicated and reflects a few uh, issues and as, uh, it's also is about one of the game's endings, so uh, spoiler alert. Uh, in the main ending of The Witness, you step, you step into this elevator thing and uh, you launch it. The game basically uh, will play a sequence of scripted animation of this elevator flying you around the island. And the game will also read you a part of Diamond Sutra in English. And you can see there some uh, traditional Chinese translated lines uh, of the Diamond Sutra in English on screen there. And so the line on this, particular, on this particular screenshot is a star at dawn, then a bubble in a stream, a flash of lightning in a summer cloud, a flickering lamp, a phantom, and a dream. So at, at the game's ending, as, at least for the first time, you sort of leave the game and you wake up from a dream, so to speak. But it's not that simple. So actually the fourth paragraph of this Diamond Sutra has another sentence in the beginning starting with, so you should view this fleeting world as a star at dawn, a bubble in a stream, and so on. And here I've extracted, uh, extracted the corresponding traditional Chinese counterparts from the screenshots, which actually is a second-hand translation directly from the English there. And there are a few things I can say about this. Uh, it's a little bit too literal and some uh, mis mistranslation. But the most important thing here should be this translation should uh, remind the players of Diamond Sutra in Chinese. So let's look at the Diamond Sutra as we know it in Chinese. It's like totally different. And um, I've got a color code uh, thing here. Uh, even if you don't read Chinese at all, uh, you can still sort of understand what corresponds to what. So things to note here is, first, the in-game English version already ignored the first sentence. And that first sentence, uh, which is grayed out, actually is, uh, sums up pretty nicely for the first and the last Chinese sentence here. So actually the Chinese characters that corresponds to the in-game English version, just those 10 characters in the middle. 
Second, you also notice that the order of the color-coded words and sentences is actually different. If you recall the screenshot that I just showed, each line of Diamond Sutra is timed to the animation sequence. So you cannot just put the original Diamond Sutra in English uh, into the game. As I've mentioned, a good localization here is, is supposed to be uh, making you think of Diamond Sutra in Chinese, because if you don't, then an important layer of the meaning of the game will just be lost for people who play in Chinese. And you would be a little bit confused about why the ending is this mystical gibberish. If you can understand the fact that these lines are from Diamond Sutra, so that you can understand what it's about, it's actually, uh, it actually connects to a few important ideas in the, uh, in, the, in the witness. So when I reached the ending for the first time, I didn't realize that. Only after I saw the discussion on Reddit, I had a much clearer idea about the endings and several other smaller clues in the game. So at least to me, this feels pretty important. Otherwise, why would the developer randomly choose those specific quotes for the ending sequence? But as, we've, as, as we have established, either you have a translation that's not gonna make people think of Diamond Sutra in Chinese, or when translating, you'd use Diamond Sutra in Chinese originally, uh, but the ending animation sequence would be out of sync. If the translator could somehow know uh, he or she was actually translating Diamond Sutra, at least there is a chance there is a workable solution could be found. Uh, something like this. So you see now, th uh, th so I made this, and uh, you see now all the color coded words and the sentences are in line with each other, and even for the line that's actually not present in the uh, Chinese version, the sentence in white there, a flickering lamp, that is actually nowhere to be found in the uh, Chinese version. I can still just add that line and not breaking the order. So if you're a Chinese speaking person and you, you, you've heard of Diamond Sutra before, and then you see this version, it will just be a lot easier for you to think of the source of the quotes. And it's also deliberately uh, written in the poem-like format, although I wouldn't claim the poem quality is good, but I think that serves the purpose. So in The Witness, we've uh, discussed about uh, three different issues. First is a very trivial localization error, download a game. Sometimes things like this happen due to the translator uh, doesn't know that domain well or the developer provide insufficient context to work with. Since a lot of times the translator only get a simple script text file and there are no visual cues, no audio cues, no explanations and no references. But of course, I honestly don't know why people would get, uh, con uh, they were confused load with download. At a second-hand translation issue, uh, which you definitely want to double-check if your content originates from other cultures or other countries, most other quotes from the audio log in the witness actually already state their source in-game, so the translator would have uh, the basic context of the quote, but unfortunately the Diamond Sutra ending doesn't have the source stated. So supplying additional notes or references here definitely will be very helpful for localization process. Also, the important decisions you've already made uh, during the development of your game, such as how to make the ending sequence based on translated materials, like Diamond Sutra, this might come back to haunt you when you are going to localize the game in the end. I would have no idea what other languages can do about it if there isn't a version of Diamond Sutra in that particular language already. So in the, fa in the last few slides, uh, things like uh, the, the things that we talked about can actually happen to all kinds of localization process in any language. And now I'm, more, I'm, I'm going to be more focused uh, on some of the detailed examples of a simplified and traditional Chinese differences. The first uh, question you would ask is maybe why uh, don't you just use, uh, use a converter? I will show you examples why converter is just not uh, viable. So we've just seen the term game uh, in Chinese a moment ago, so I will just use that again. Now that let's break the two characters down, the both traditional and simplified Chinese versions, the, the vocabulary game has two Chinese characters. The idea of the second character is e uh, easier, which just means drama, and uh, it actually is a one-to-one -one mapping. But for the first character, both uh, play and swim characters are used in traditional Chinese and they have uh, different meanings. But in simplified, the two characters become one. And uh, so the mapping is many to one in this case, which is not viable if you want to do a simplified to, to traditional conversion. 
Okay, now this is a bit more complicated here. Uh, there are three Chinese characters here, and we use all three of them in, China, uh, in traditional. They have the same pronunciation, the only difference being the last character's tone is different from the former two. So what is the big deal among these three characters? So now let's do that uh, mapping again. First of all, this three-stroke uh, character is used both in traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese, meaning interfere or involve. The next character, the first meaning is dry, but uh, in simplified, it is then uh, mapped into this three-stroke character like the one above. And when this character forms compound terms uh, combined with other Chinese characters, uh, it forms terms like dried fish. But when it is combined with a, a relative term, such as sister, it means stepsister, and also uh, stepmother, stepfather, and so on. Finally, let's talk about this third character. It's pretty versatile in meanings already, as you can see. Uh, but then the simplified Chinese version also simplified it into the very same character uh, like the ones above. And not only that, now you can see uh, it's really hard not to consider the F word potential and the implication here when you see the very same uh, character can also be used to describe step relatives. Yeah, so you see some of these funny internet pictures about machine translated signs in, in, in simplified Chinese that look like this. And it probably means dried vegetable, right? This particular F word confusion won't happen to machine translated traditional Chinese, but you know, this kicking old woman is just as bad. So uh, just to recap some of the points that we've talked about uh, uh, simplified BS traditional. It goes without saying that the writing of a lot of characters in the simplified Chinese is a lot simpler, but also the meanings of the characters are changed or funneled. And it's, it is not a one-to-one -one or many-to-one -one mapping. It's rather a many-to-many -many mapping, considering a lot of the daily vocabularies are different in China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, making the conversion not really viable both ways. You may also say that, okay, I'm making a game without words and text, so localization should not be a problem for me, right? But that's not true, unless your game doesn't even use text for the game title, uh, which is almost impossible. And beware of this issue because it might affect discoverability and also people's perception of the game in the target, or, uh, in the target regions. So the first example is John Blow's another famous title, Braid, which, as far as I remember, doesn't have any other official names uh, other than the English one. When it came out in Taiwan, we just called it as, as is. But in China, I think it's some press or uh, prominent uh, players online started to call this four-character term. Uh, that basically translates back to time and space fantasy or something similar. But anyway, it's an un unofficial name that just caught on in China. However, in Taiwan, if you convert that four-character name uh, into traditional Chinese, that actually is the name for Tales of Fantasia and the later Tales of series. So if you dump that four character uh, into Google and search that, there will be two different famous games coming up, which is rather confusing at times. Now the second example, Pokemon. Uh, this is going to be a particularly interesting one and maybe start to uh, get a little bit political. So in early 2016, Pokemon Company tried to unify the name and the logo in the major Chinese speaking markets, namely China, uh, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. And for their upcoming, uh, their then upcoming game, Pokemon Sun and Moon, that, which released, released last year. Because this was also the first time they were going to do an official Chinese, uh, Chinese version of the Pokemon games, so they thought they want to fix the name of the game in different regions once and for all. So here's the problem. Taiwan and Hong Kong have totally uh, different names for Pokemon in the past because uh, back then in the mid-90s, Pokemon anime was introduced into both regions independently, uh, although roughly uh, around the same time. And the local people have different localizations. And it's not even about the game, it's just the animation. And all the different uh, Pokemons in the series, they mostly have different names between Taiwan and Hong Kong. And then the Pokemon company want, want, want to unify that uh, last year. So here you don't have to understand what all the Chinese characters uh, mean. Suffice to say, now 
in Chinese speaking worlds, these three character, uh, these three Chinese character, Pokemon, uh, in the bottom maps to Pokemon now, and it's based on Mandarin pronunciation. This is an important point. So about this specific issue, China market didn't have much influence over it, over time in the past because it began with the localization of the anime, and China lagged behind Taiwan and uh, Hong Kong in this regard a bit back then, and when their market was eventually exposed to franchise in a big way, China uh, more or less settled down with the naming uh, from Taiwan. The reason is pretty obvious now because Hong Kong uh, have been using Cantonese pronunciation to name the Pokemon, and the Taiwan and China both use, uh, mainly use Mandarin. So the key here is, while people in Hong Kong and Taiwan both use traditional Chinese as the writing system, you can still end up with potentially face, you can uh, end up still uh, facing hugely different, uh, different uh, localizations when trying to do the, the, the game's localization. And the Pokemon company's decision didn't fare, well, uh, didn't fare too well for them in Hong Kong. Some gamers are really baffled by it. Why, uh, why it was supposed to be an unification on naming and uh, lots of stuff in Pokemon, Hong Kong players were facing the fact that more than half of their beloved Pokemon names, which had been used for around 20 years, now being changed as a consequence. China and Taiwan players were hardly affected by it. So this was an actual photo for real demonstration against Pokemon's new Chinese version in Hong Kong. The slogan on the sign here uh, basically say, is saying, give our Pokemon names back. These are the kind of things you just cannot be too careful about. You know, Japanese has uh, always been very famous for their carefulness uh, when doing business, but, but this kind of thing still happened, and I doubt they uh, knew this would invoke protests like this. As an opposite example, some of you might be familiar with the, or, or, or at least heard of the uh, mobile suit Gundam. And you see Bandai has uh, basically no problem with it. Different regions have di their own uh, official translations. So next example, I was on a team that helped the official traditional Chinese uh, subtitle for indie game and movie. And I mentioned that Netflix re uh, recently ruined it. So the thing is, when we decided whether to translate the names or not, the main factor for us was, is the translation used by the developer or publisher themselves? If not, is there any local, uh, is there any local translation that could be verified by big and credible gaming press locally, and even to a point that the usage is customary or even historical, like a legacy name? If not, uh, we just use the original name in, in English or whatever uh, it's from. But when Indian Movie was published on Netflix late 2016, Netflix changed almost all the names in our subtitle to use the names they found on Chinese Wikipedia, which is almost at all times not official names. Disrespectful or not, the main issue here is going to be discoverability on the storefront. Uh, be, it, because if people watching Indian Movie in Chinese and saw name of the game and couldn't find it on any platforms uh, that it's on, are you doing any good, or maybe you're actually hindering the, discover, uh, you're hindering the discoverability of the game? And there's more to it. So let's see how bad the Wikipedia translated names can be, using Super Meat Boy as the example. So let's see what's going on with this uh, Super, Meat Boy, uh, Super Meat Boy's Chinese name. The first two characters is simple, the last two characters simple, Super and Boy, but the middle two characters, that means carnivorous. If you watched an uh, indie game movie and or seen Edmund uh, talk about this character before, you know that it's about a concept of without skin and protection. And saying Meat Boy is carnivorous is almost the opposite of the point. And in fact, when the game was uh, published in, by Microsoft Studios onto XBLA for the first time, uh, they actually did a good job on traditional Chinese localization and give Meat Boy a cute Chinese name. To use the same character twice here is usually, uh, usually a way to emphasize the cuteness, or in this case, it can also mean chubby as well, without sabotaging the actual uh, title of the game. 
So the points here are, uh, if you don't decide on a localized name yourself, you are leaving this kind of opportunities to, to others. You should work with your translators on this issue if possible, uh, because as I said, it hinders uh, discoverability on the storefront and also the perception of the game in that particular region. And uh, unofficial translations on Wikipedia is actually a real issue here. I have no concrete idea how to solve this because uh, you actually have no way to uh, control you know, Wikipedia editing. And the next example I'm going to bring up is uh, Thumper. So back in mid-2016, uh, Mark uh, from Drool asked me about the possible Chinese name for Thumper. He already knew something's up with uh, the Chinese-speaking region since his, uh, his lovely wife is actually from Hong Kong. Now let's do a small challenge in your mind just for a few seconds. If you know a second language other than English, uh, how and what would you name Thumper in that language? Do you translate it by pronunciation or by meaning? Or a bit of both or neither? What is your reasoning behind that? I hope you can agree with me that this is actually pretty hard. I don't know if it's possible for, for developers to do, this, uh, to do this, but there will be names that are hard to translate and there are names uh, easy to translate. Let's just hope that you can land on something that's easier to translate and still being cool and unique in a way. So an opposite example to Thumper's situation uh, is this. Let's take a look at the Manifold Garden. So sort of at the same time, uh, mid-2016, uh, during early July, I invited uh, the developer Willem back to uh, Taiwan and give a talk at our conference, which is type, uh, Taipei Game Developers Forum 2016. And he just casually mentioned this to me, uh, saying that his friend suggested to him that he go with the name, uh, this four character name, which means infinite garden in Chinese. As you can see, it's very close to manifold garden. So uh, this serves as, a, as an example of uh, easy to translate names. An infinite garden in Chinese still sounds pretty cool and true to the theme as well. So uh, William said he probably will go with this name in Chinese. Of course, sometimes there are very good reasons to leave some specific things in your game un untranslated on purpose. And I don't mean just the title, but also other specific terms you created for your game. Because gameplay or design or aesthetic, aesthetic reasons, or maybe your translators just couldn't find a good corresponding term in the target language. However, when it comes to China, let me briefly talk about uh, China's new policy here since late 2016. Basically, uh, they have a mobile game content regulation citing uh, other language related uh, regulations in China. And as far as I know, somehow it is not only enforced on mobile games, but also on console platforms that have branches in China. It's either that or there are similar regulations or laws for console and PC games uh, that I didn't dug up. Like there are several other related laws uh, regarding general publication, online publication, online games, uh, which more or less have the same context in China. So these are the actual title of the regulation if you want to uh, check them out. Uh, of course, there, there are no English versions for these documents. I only write them down, uh, I, I write those notes down so that uh, English speakers can understand. If, if, if there are uh, friends here who know more about the specifics of the approval process in China, please correct me if I'm wrong. As far as I understand, the reason why Thumper needed a Chinese name is exactly because of, uh, it's, it's exactly because of those regulations. When he asked me about it back then, he was trying to get the deal sealed with the approval process in China. But in fact, Sony had already sent uh, names to the process without Mark realizing, and uh, three of them were uh, pre-approved. So basically, he, um, the developer had to choose one out of those pre-approved uh, pre names. There was no other options due to uh, time constraints, uh, since it's extremely costly to resubmit the official statement is that the process usually costs one month, but what I've been hearing is that uh, it's between three to six months in the worst case. So in China, uh, Thumper is translated to Rampaging Beetle. This is sort of an okay name considering the circumstances, and uh, the other two pre-approved names were even worse. 
So uh, another example I want to talk about is, uh, is uh, Demo. So this game is from a pretty successful game studio in Taiwan called Rearch, uh, which is best known for their rhythm games. Demo was released on PS Vita uh, some time ago, and during last year there was, they were also trying to get approved in China. In order to get approved, they translated the game title, and also they have to show it next to the original uh, title. Other indie games on PS on, on the on PS and China had to do this as well, including Thumper. But for demo, there are other stuff, further complicated things. So you see, uh, this is the result menu after you finish a song in a game, and it originally looked like this. And the simplified Chinese version got changed uh, to this. One interesting thing is that they didn't translate the. Uh, there is a yellow text there, hard level eight, which is the difficulty of the song. They didn't translate. Instead, they just changed it to the corresponding text uh, to, to L8. And because hard level eight in simplified Chinese is just so much more cluttered visually than the original hard level, hard LV8 texts. And the approval feedback said if the English text or letters don't have obvious meanings, uh, you can leave them as is, but you have to translate everything else. So LV uh, in this context obviously means level, so they said it had to be translated. Then the approval uh, feedback also demanded them to translate all song names. But then again, it didn't look as good, and the song names textures were custom made by artists originally, it would be quite uh, impossible to redesign them all in simplified Chinese. Not to mention that some of the song names don't sound as, uh, as good after translation. So their compromise was they would show the suggested translation for the song names on top right corner of the screen. At one point, they were even asked to translate the composer names that will be shown in another menu. But the composer names, a lot of uh, uh, composer names actually are invented words that, that is not uh, even translatable, and even if they're if, even if they are translatable, a lot of times composer names serves as a unique trademark for them, and should be universally used. It would be a huge problem for rhythm games if the translation is enforced. Fortunately, the approval uh, people in China finally understood that and uh, dropped the topic for the composer names. So, a uh, few things here. First, I think negotiations, negotiations during the, uh, the approval process is, also, uh, is almost un unavoidable. And also the, uh, the approval feedback could still be reasonable in the end, but you need to uh, be, be, pre be prepared for several back and forth discussions that take up a lot of time. And you need to put effort into modifying stuff other than the usual things you already have to do when doing general localization. Since every game is different, though, there are guidelines you can check out. Uh, it is still hard to tell if your specific case will be approved or not in, in, in advance. And I'm not even talking about other parts of the regulations. They are just so much more detailed, but up to interpretation, not exhaustive, uh, not exhaustive stuff. Uh, so all that is already out of scope of this talk, so I'll just stop there. In short, suffice to say, if you want to release on mobile or console in China, find a good publisher. And uh, in the case of Thumper and Demo that I just talked about, basically it's Sony helping them dealing with all this approval and feedback process. <coughs> okay, so go back to easier stuff, encoding. Now, nowadays this should not be a problem anymore because you should be able to just stick to UTF-8 at all times. But uh, just watch out for this byte order mark thing that only Windows has. When I was helping Indie Game a movie uh, during the, uh, d doing the subtitle, at some point during their text processing, the encoding was somehow changed into US UCS2 slash uh, UTF-16. And we didn't realize that and made a mess for a little while. Another big issue turned out to be that when UTF-16 and the UCS2 texts were being integrated into the indie game movie, movie, uh, movie player on Steam, there was a forced replacement of all carriage returns with line feeds. And because of the fact that UTF-16 characters uh, are multi-byte fixed length encoding, the 0Ds uh, and 0As, which, are, uh, which were uh, carriage returns and 
uh, line feeds in ASCII were also used by multi-byte Chinese characters in UTF-16. So the force replacement ruined a very small portion of the subtitle, that's what's being shown here. And we, we didn't even notice that before uh, it got released on Steam. So we have to fix that uh, afterwards very quickly. So I think the takeaway is that always check every related options, options in all the editors you might uh, touch during the development process, uh, unless, uh, I mean, you, usually it's not just uh, you, uh, it's all the people on the team. Some people may do text uh, most progr uh, programmatically, and some people may use you know, different editors because of specific reasons, and bad stuff can s happen and hide within all the sorts of places you might not think of. So basically, UTFA all the way. Now, this is a big deal here, UI and phone issues. Here's the menu of Skull of the Shogun in simplified Chinese version on Google Play. Of course, the game it was, uh, itself was great, but at the first glance at this screenshot, even if you don't read Chinese, you, you should still notice there are serif and sans serif fonts mixed up with each other. Under no circumstances you should, should you do that, and it's just strange why this was published as is. Of course, the original developer, 17-bit, was not responsible for this. I think another studio ported the Android version for them. But again, the point here is just that even if you don't read Chinese, you should still be able to see the problem. The second problem is also pretty common when you try to localize into Chinese. You see the button text uh, is already quite small on the uh, top left. But let me just show you the Chinese version. So uh, the button on top left corner are like, you know, totally unreadable. So two things here. Chinese characters just have a higher stroke density. It's a fact. So when you use small fonts, English versions may still be readable, but there's going to be some chance that the Chinese version will be unreadable just like this. Moreover, maybe because of the scale of the font settings or uh, just different, uh, the font settings just different between uh, different uh, font files. When you want to draw it using the API calls, uh, say I want the texture, the text, the text texture to be generated from this 24-point uh, glyph. The end result might not be the same uh, using different phones. So, like in one phone, the 24-point character is like bigger than the other one. And uh, another example here is from the game Fez. This is from the English PC version. You see all the pixel art characters are very cool and slick. But now the traditional Chinese PC version, just by uh, changing it into a pretty standard sans serif font there, you start, you start to feel that there's a conflict in style with the escape button down there already. And now let's see the original Xbox 360 version of Fez, which was an earlier release. They used a different Chinese phone back then. And this particular phone was sort of an equivalence of Comic Sans. Uh, in Chinese, which although was kind of cute, I, I just don't think they are a good fit for Fez in my opinion. It's also worth noting that the different phones were chosen for different platform uh, releases. Of course, there could be multiple reasons uh, why they did this, such as the phone license was exclusive for 360 version. We don't know, but this is also a real problem we are trying to localize for multiple platforms because you might need different you, in, under certain, uh, certain circumstances, you might need different phones on different platforms. And also, you see this spacing between the punctuation marks and other Chinese characters, and also the line heights. Everything is just so you know, cluttered and making it quite hard to read. This can, this can also happen to a lot of localization process, and it's quite technical because you need to understand the effect uh, and uh, the details of typography information from a true type phone and such. And the different phones for different languages can just throw you off in all kinds of ways. So finally, some general concerns about Chinese phones themselves. The biggest problem we face collectively is that the pricing is just so steep. Uh, I have an actual quote from a Taiwanese phone company. So if you want to embed a a font into your distribution for one font, they were charging it for 10,000 uh, $10, US dollars per product, per platform. It's just crazy. 
And also there's a lack of choice. Most of, most of the time you are left only with two standard choice, which is a standard looking serif font and a standard looking sans serif font. Because Chinese fonts are just fucking hard to make. You know, like ASCII, 128 characters, it's pretty easy, right? You, you can have thousands of font choices. And also, you know, you can have things like windings. But for a Chinese font uh, to have general purpose usefulness, it has to say at least have 5,000 different characters. And the average design difficulty for each character is also way higher. And to keep a lower cost on this, especially for indie developers, usually you would have to rely on system phones, you know, calling from OS specific APIs. And it can be very hard to unify the looks and the style across platform. Although I have to say the default sense serif font nowadays on uh, different platforms actually uh, look more and more like each other nowadays. So if you only need a style neutral sense serif font, you may be able to get away with just using the, the always default uh, fonts. But if for any reason you need a free and embeddable Chinese font for your game for Serif, you can try uh, Hanazono Mincho, which is a Japanese academia produced font originally intended for Buddhism research. I think it is also covers all Chinese, Japanese, and Korean characters. And for sensitive style, I think the best, uh, the best one currently is the Google Noto Sense CJK series. Uh, CJK stands for Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. It was, it was a, a brilliant collaboration between Google and Adobe. There's also an open source phone uh, project called the Wenchen Yi in China. And they started the project many, many years ago and it's also quite popular. But the Wenchen Yi is licensed under GPL, so there may be uh, GPL complication, uh, implications. And just for the sake of being thorough, uh, when it comes to fonts, there are also font glyph design differences. So the font glyphs here on the left side are designed in Taiwan, and the ones on the right side are designed in China. And this is not about simplify or traditional differences. Basically what I'm saying is uh, there are fonts more suitable for Taiwan and some fonts more suitable for China. Uh, but actually it probably won't affect your game in any way. If you really are interested in knowing more about this stuff, you can try looking into, uh, there's a book called CJKV Information Processing. It's uh, published by O'Reilly. And the last category of issues, uh, it's you know, political and uh, going to be pretty fun. Although we've already seen a bit of this from the Pokemon thing. So, uh, Back in the early 2016 in Taiwan, this is actually pretty huge. Street Fighter V came out back then, and uh, you know what can possibly be political about Street Fighter V? But as you recall, Street Fighter V uh, has been developed and promoted as an eSport focused video game, and uh, they were uh, doing all kinds of official push for Street Fighter V eSports in a way that is never seen before in the series. Now locked in players can choose their own nationality to represent themselves on or, or their country. And of course, national flag system was also designed. But when it comes to Taiwan, you, if you ever watched the Olympics or you know, some of the baseball World Cup games before, you might recognize this flag as Chinese Taipei flag, which is a flag that is Taiwan is forced to use in actual international sports events. But even then, there is something off about this flag. It's a mashup by Capcom people using Chinese Taipei flag and their own trademark. I mean, what the flying F is this, Capcom? A, a very famous uh, Taiwanese Street Fighter player, Gamer B, uh, and a lot of Taiwanese, other Taiwanese players try to send compl uh, complaints about this, but Capcom just gave a sorry, not sorry answer. This is fairly new too. Winning 11-17 also came out last year. Uh, or as you know it here, Pro Evolution Soccer. Actually, uh, they really put into some serious effort for Chinese-speaking regions. The game has complete Mandarin and Cantonese voiceover, which is actually pretty fun when you imagine Anchorman shouting in Cantonese. But they also did this. 
If you choose Taiwan in the country options, it will warn you about not being able to attend any international games. Uh, you know, as a Taiwanese gamer, I can only see, uh, I can only say that this game's realism is impeccable. <laughs> so, uh, lastly, this example just came out a few months ago. Yakuza 6 was, uh, uh, Yakuza 6 has a Taiwanese hostess that you, you can meet up. One particular dialogue is about her homeland, and this was the line when Yakuza 6 came out originally. What is your impression of the country of Taiwan? There is no English uh, version of Yakuza 6 now, so that's just my translation. As a result, a lot of Taiwanese gamers were very proud of Sega at the time, but not long after the screenshot was posted online and began to circulate, some of the prominent, uh, prominent internet personality in China started to raise this issue, and basically Sega bailed out. So about a week later, the line became, uh, you know, like this, and uh, from a production point of view, let's just be neutral about it, from a production point of view, if you make mistakes like this, mistakes like this, uh, this is not just text changes, you know, you have also to change the voice over as well in just in a few days. However, fun fact, Yakuza 6 isn't even released in China yet. There is no simplified Chinese version as of now. And as a matter of fact, the whole Yakuza series has never been officially released in China, ever, in the past. Somehow Sega had to employ self-censorship over this. So I guess this is quite interesting. Uh, this is the kind of things you, have, you might run into when doing localization in Chinese. So now let me just quickly summar, summarize a few tips and conclusions. So uh, I've noticed uh, this on a few occasions in the past. There is this uh, one symptom you can easily recognize if your Chinese localization is machine translated. So what you see here is the option menu from Skull of the Shogun in the simplified Chinese version on Google Play. The option being uh, highlighted here is the language setting option. The last, ca the last character in that three character term uh, is Ren, is uh, meaning person. And the language option should not be something person, right? And another language uh, choice, it's a four character word. Uh, if you see that particular character in the, uh, at the end of a Chinese word, it either means of something or it's an empty word following a verb or an adjective. And uh, still, the language option should not be like that. So if your language choices have something s uh, similar to those, you know it's almost certainly uh, machine translated. And by extension, other parts of your localization may be machine translated as well, so you better do something about it. And just for, your, uh, just for uh, your information, if you don't know yet, the term simplified Chinese written in simplified Chinese look like that. And the traditional Chinese written in traditional Chinese look like that. So uh, this is what your language options should look like. Also, I talked about the converter issues between simplified and traditional Chinese. You don't want your translator ever to, using, to be using converters. Although, if you don't know Chinese, you cannot check if they use the converters. Uh, but actually, that's not true. Uh, what I'm going to propose here might sound a little bit stupid, but actually, you can f find your own uh, converter online. There are uh, uh, ones with English uh, interfaces uh, on the web. You can find the converter online and use that yourself and try to compare a small portion of the text from the traditional and the simplified Chinese versions of your game. You know, better to test uh, a few longer sentences. It should be pretty obvious uh, if, they will, uh, if they are auto-converted because they will look the same as your output uh, from the converter you just used. And you can then decide if something needs to be done about it, like find another localization service or something. But if you just want to check if your traditional Chinese localization is converted from simplified, there is a very simple way to tell that. So if your traditional Chinese menu has this term, uh, which is restaurant menu, then this is 100% guaranteed a direct conversion from simplified Chinese, because the term is simply used, uh, simply used like that in China. It's a sort of a legacy term. But both Taiwan and Hong Kong don't use that. Of course, unless you are making a restaurant game. So uh, next, you have to know who you are working with. 
uh, be sure to ask your localization service translator or publishers to make sure whether they are doing simplified or, tradi or traditional Chinese or both. Best case, best case scenario, they should have different people dedicated to simplified and traditional separately. And please do not say just, you know, we have that in Chinese. Simplify or traditional, you have to specify. Otherwise, it's just confusing. If I see a game saying we support Chinese, then when I started playing the game, I will assume that I'm going to uh, see traditional Chinese myself. But if it shows up in simplified Chinese, that actually can be a little bit annoying. And actually, it's vice versa. If you are, uh, if you are uh, using mainly simplified Chinese and you see a game called saying uh, we have it in Chinese, and uh, when it comes up, it's traditional, it will also feel you know a little bit disrespect, uh, disrespectful or you know annoying. Also, as a general idea, work with your localization service and or translators. Provide them with enough context and references to work with. Uh, get them hands on your game. If you have watched the movie Arrival, you would get idea what what means what it means to be you know on the scene. Uh, if you haven't watched the movie Arrival, go watch it. A, full uh, a spreadsheet full of just in-game text can sometimes be very hard to work with. Provide explanations for invented terms or special usages. Specify quote sources, uh, joke sources. Spe uh, speci uh, specify when you can allow translators to deviate from your original text to better fit a target audience, things like that. And uh, fan translations. Not saying that you should solely rely on this, but it can actually happen. For example, there's a fan translated traditional Chinese version of the manual uh, for the game Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, which is like uh, 20 or 30 pages of PDF. And also, uh, one friend of mine in Taiwan helped on Epic uh, with it, all its traditional Chinese translation six years ago just because he loved on Epic so much and happened to be a very professional translator himself. And again, uh, in my opinion, political stuff a lot of times is not avoidable, as a few examples I've brought up today. What I'm trying to do here is present the situation to you and uh, put these issues up on the table. I think at least this is, beginning, this is a beginning for uh, further communication. I'm perfectly comfortable with the possibility that all of you decide that you don't want to deal with Chin Chinese localization anymore, or maybe you want to just give up on traditional Chinese and Taiwanese players uh, in the future. But at least that's not a, that's, now that's not a decision from insufficient information. I just want people to really recognize and understand that. That's all. Uh, finally, we all know this is not easy at all. Uh, and uh, as a game developer, it's difficult not to uh, have the sentiment of like, uh, if only all people speak the same language. <laughs> so as the final point I want to make today uh, is that uh, different languages and different cultures lead to diversity and uniqueness. And I think they are uh, the crucial parts of innovation in games as art and games as media. So we can have more and more exciting new games in the future. Every time I come to GDC, it's, uh, I'm always so impressed with the diversity and the inclusiveness here. I hope this talk brought you more insights uh, into Chinese-speaking regions and uh, more understanding of our situation. Uh, a quick shout out to these friends who have been a great help during the preparation of this talk. And thank you. Please feel free if you want to ask uh, any questions. You can uh, line up to the microphone there. Hi. Okay. So uh, my question is regarding uh, the recent legislation uh, for no foreign language in uh, in Chinese game. Um, so uh, specifically regarding uh, credits and license text. Sometimes there's license like legal license text for software, like an Apache license that you include include in your credits. Mm -hmm. um, is that generally just fine to have that verbatim in English as the original legal text was presented that you're required, or is there going to be usually problems with credits? And then also like English names and things like that. Uh, so for, I think for documents that is not actually in the, uh, the final version of the game, 
I think uh, it's so this would be like credits that are displayed in the game, like when during oh, credits okay. and like the license text. It's it's in the game. Mm -hmm. It's not a part of the game play, mm -hmm. but it is in the game. So, uh, from my understanding, there are some uh, exceptions to this. Like uh, they will give exceptions to some of the technical, uh, like the license documents that you talked about. Uh, so from my uh, uh, friends' ex experiences before, they said there are some ex uh, ex exceptions you can maybe tackle, but uh, the problem is that you really have to just you know negotiate and uh, try to get uh, uh, you know go through this whole feedback and approval process. Cool. Thank yes. you. Hi, um, firstly, I'm here to say sorry about the ProAvision soccer example, because I'm from the ProAvision team, so <laughs> just Thank say you. sorry I didn't let you in the international competition. I remember there was a serious discussion going about the definition of international competition. So, um, and so, I, so sorry, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think this is national competition. I think it's just I want to uh, present this mm -hmm. uh, situation to you guys, because I don't think uh, a lot of people actually really know that, you know. Right, yeah. So, okay, my question is about the approval process, actually. Um, and I, my basic understanding is that uh, the government is checking if the, all the uh, non-Chinese uh, contexts are, are translated into Chinese language. Um, do they even check, like, uh, if they, like, all the terms in the uh, game is uh, equivalent to what's common in Chinese? I mean, like, uh, we are dealing with lots of football player names, uh, for example, and then we don't know, like, uh, what the, like, official uh, translated Chinese name for each player. So, um, we are now struggling with that, and... Uh, uh, my, my question is just: uh, Do they even check the like uh, check the Pokemon uh, example like mm -hmm. uh, that was different from what you use uh, uh, in, uh, um, usually in your country? I, I don't think they will check that. No. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. So they they uh, basically check if their uh, context is translated in Chinese, like all the context. Yeah, so basically, if you want to translate, I think they are like uh, people's names or specific specific terms that may uh, may be used in China already, mm -hmm. things like that. I think uh, either you can look up those, and I. Mm. So I think if it's not. Uh, Well, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like you know, uh, official translation for the sports players' name, mm -hmm. things like that. I don't think those will be enforced by the China government. All right. I, other, it, it may be enforced by representatives of. Or maybe it's not re reinforced. Uh, it, it it can be just that if you have a name uh, that is uh, not a common one, mm -hmm. people would not get recognized. Okay. But I I don't think that will get you blocked during the approval process. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, so uh, if you have other questions, you can just uh, come uh, up front and. Uh, Thank you for your time today, and uh, hope you have, have a, yeah, thank you very much.